reefs are one of the most important ecosystems on the planet. Home to more than one-third of all species, 25% of the fish that we eat rely on coral reefs. They provide shore protection from wave action, especially during storms. Coral reefs are made up of hundreds of coral colonies. Each colony is comprised of thousands of tiny coral animals called polyps. Within its tissues, each polyp contains thousands of single-celled algae called symbiodinium. The algae get a place to live, and they give the coral enough food to grow and build the framework of the reef. But their relationship is a delicate balance. When the coral gets stressed, their algae leave and the coral tissue appears white or bleached. Bleaching can happen in all species of corals. Once a coral has bleached, it becomes unable to grow and unable to fight infections and often dies, like these corals here. If enough corals die, the reef breaks down into rubble and disappears. Warming ocean temperatures are a major cause of coral bleaching. The summer of 2016 saw the largest coral bleaching event ever recorded in human history. Our oceans are getting warmer, and without action, we will lose the planet's coral reefs forever. But what if we could make corals stronger? We have evidence that when corals are exposed to small doses of heat stress, they become more resistant to bleaching. It seems there's something in the genes of corals that allows them to remember the stress. You can think of stress memory as a sort of vaccine. If the coral gets a small portion of the stress, it may remember that stress the next time and be better prepared to handle the stress so it doesn't bleach. The small dose of stress is called priming. My goal is to see if I can make the critically endangered staghorn coral, a Acropora cervicornis, stronger through priming. Here's how it'll work. I will take small branches from corals in a nursery, fragment them, and epoxy them to grids. Then I will let them heal before experiments. You can think of this as coral gardening, or pruning corals to make more corals. Once they heal, I will use them in experiments. First, using these chambers we built, I will find the temperature that causes the coral algae symbiosis to break down. Then I will find the temperature that causes my corals to bleach. Armed with this information, I will make measurements to see whether my corals become bleaching resistant when they are primed. If priming makes my corals stronger, we can prime corals before planting them on degraded reefs. I need your help. I currently need $6,000 to do this research. Every dollar helps. Please consider supporting my research, and thanks for watching.